Wait, Ooh, hi. I, I just want to get my, my hair. Welcome to the Daily Smash for Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. I just drove back from San Diego. You j almost got there at the same time. Almost beat you home? Kind of. We flew home. Thank you, Asia. Asia flew us and Megan and Ben home from La Paz on a private jet. Because they, they felt so sorry for us. We had, because of our experience getting there. Uh, we landed in San, San Diego to clear customs, and I left the group to get our truck, which was at the Cross Border Express parking lot, and then drove back. And here we are. So we're just going to kind of do this show on the fly for Tuesday, and then uh, get all caught up and bring you all kinds of great stuff for the rest of the week. Um, what an amazing vacation we had. Yeah. So grateful to Asia and Ted. For hosting us, they have this fantastic crew. Oh my God! Do you really take pictures? Yeah, I have pictures of it. We have we have group photos. Um, it, Asia had been on this boat for two and a half months, and it's not just one boat; it's a fleet of boats. It's a fleet of boats, but listen, th this boat is so huge; it goes around the world. Yeah, let's go through the Panama Canal mm -hmm. and like go all the way to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Now. You have to imagine the ship for gas just to go back home is $100,000 for gas. And the crew members have to be on this ship for three weeks. Three Could weeks. Could you imagine? I'd be so claustrophobic. I'd be like... I would jump ship just to get to land. <laughs> like, what happens if you get sick? Like, what's well, going on there? They like, said they're going to have to pause when they get to the other side of the Panama Canal, potentially, because of these storms that are in the Gulf. Yeah. But that that boat, that it's a 165, I think, 165 feet, can get to Florida from La Paz, Mexico, on one tank of fuel, but the tank holds 18,000-plus gallons. And the gas in La Paz, he said, was a, over five dollars a gallon. So that's eighty grand. But in Mexico, I'm sorry, in Panama, the gas is like two dollars and thirty cents, less than half the price. So I would do like half the tank. <laughs> yeah. Get to La Paz and uh -huh. fill up. Yeah. I can't even talk right oh now. Oh my god! How did you lose your voice? I I <laughs> I've been screaming, yelling, crying. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear my voice. The new boat they're building, their 200 footer, has a 50,000 gallon fuel supply. How much does that cost? That would be, in Mexico, it would be over a quarter million dollars to fill the tank. So when you hear all these people like Bill Gates, whom did Mad Summer, who we know, um, and they're all environmentalists. Uh -huh. They're full of crap. <laughs> okay, yeah, just an FYI. Your carbon they footprint. They have jet planes. They have all these things like Bezos. All of a sudden, like we're we're left wing and we're all these things. No, 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 no. They're they're paying for that. Yeah, um, it's a joke. I do. Oh, there's global warming. Before we go any further, let's uh, give a shout out to Ilya Wine, which sponsors our Daily Smash. And these are a small business, which is so good. They've won points. This is uh, people that have started from the, the ground, made their way up, deservingly so. Yeah. It is a great product, which we would never, ever, ever not promote something that's crap. Yeah, we wouldn't promote it if we didn't love it. We love it. We and love you it. will too. That's a promise. You're going to love Illy Wine. And uh, Layla Joy Williams, who created the company, texted me earlier today that they have a new promotion. So if you buy three or more bottles, free shipping. And you get 20% off with the discount code Rick and Kelly20 at Ilya.com. So you get 20% off the already great price on this wine. And then you don't have to pay for shipping. All you got to do is buy three bottles or more. And it just gets shipped right to your door. Right to your door. You don't even have to go anywhere. Nope. You just stay home. So if you you're, sit there if you're, and wait for it. If you're a semi-alcoholic. <laughs> or if you just like wine. No, like us. You would totally enjoy this. It has some wine and cheese and be merry with your friends. You'll have a great time. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things about being on that boat. I mean, you have a full I staff. I cannot talk. They will make us make you anything you want, whenever you want it. Food, drinks, they just they come, they come, serve it to you on a tray. 
the nicest staff. Asia was, she was crying when she had to leave after two and a half months on that ship with this amazing crew. They are an amazing crew, and she's built like a lot of relationships with them, and yeah. Um, they they did a video. I can't. We can't show the the dance videos because we can't play music here on YouTube without getting in trouble. But this week on the Rick and Kelly show, I'm going to put a whole travel log together. It's a really some really beautiful scenes, some amazingly cool vistas, and some really fun moments on the ship. A lot of it having having to do with with uh, dancing and singing to a bunch of different songs. Uh, Asia has like a nightclub up top. And then they did a whole flash mob dance for us, for Kelly and I, one day as a surprise. It was cute. To uh, a song from don't Anastasia. Leave, don't leave me out alone <laughs> in the cold. I never would. Thank I you. never would. Look how pretty. Let's talk about your dress for a minute, how beautiful this dress is. Oh, I got is. this in Palm Desert. Rick bought it for me. Oh, Rick likes this on me. I love that dress you? on you. God, yes. You look like so stunning and this sexy. This thing was like 100 bucks. It looks amazing on you. That's hugs, so hugs funny. your beautiful figure. Oh, I wouldn't never. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and my voice is like going out because uh, I was so excited. But I would have never have picked this dress out, but Rick liked it. And oh, so, hell yeah. You wouldn't have picked that one? Well, the girl gave it to me. You're like, oh, it looks really good on you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we're going to have to give you some hot tea with lemon yeah. after this to help mm -hmm. your throat. And, and go to bed. Um, there are a couple comments that I wanted to share. Um, Not negative ones. I'm sure there's a whole bunch. Well, this one from Kitsch Yo Yo 78 Rick and Kelly, sorry you entered the twilight zone of traveling. I sure miss the good old days of flying. My first plane ride was in an iconic 747 double decker. Remember those? The double decker planes? Oh, yeah. No, I've done those on Virgin. Yeah. Now they I had a bar on the top and the yeah. bottom. Oh, I used to do those all the time. Yeah, me too. I was a million mile. Flyer, uh -huh. like I had a million. My yeah, I'm talking about my my past life. I don't talk about my past life. She I said, am not drunk. I just my voice is. She said, "Now I call planes flying roaches." <laughs> and then Alma Trujillo said, "Your first mistake was flying Valeris. It's the worst airline." I haven't had a chance to read all of your comments, but there were a lot of comments about our travel journey that we did on Monday Smash. So I'm going to go back and look at those and share some of the better ones tomorrow. I, uh, <laughs> I did cancel our return flight on Valeris when Asia graciously offered to let us fly home with her. Here we go, baby. It's just like Valaris. Just like Valaris. Woo! Thanks, Valaris. Thanks, Valaris. Yeah. Thanks, Asia. Ted. <laughs> yeah. We gotta take a picture. A comfortable bed. That whole thing. Great. I have some sucks as well. I don't know if I make it. Oh, this is. Was it something I said? Kelly, what? was it something I said? Sure, I wanted to be able to turn it on. Aww. Yeah, That's all right, the boys are in the back. Sorry about the baby, sorry about the baby plane, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're really slumming it, Asia. What's better, Valaris or this? Uh, the Greyhound bus. <laughs> <laughs> There's but, nothing like buying private, though. Yeah. I can't, I can't even speak. Well, go ahead, Rick. I, I don't want you to it's talk. It's on you. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch you. I see. I honestly cannot. I cannot speak. Yeah. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Well, I'm gonna do in the news now. Do your anchoring. I'm gonna do in the news now. Okay, go ahead. In the news now. In the news. Oh, <laughs> poor can't. baby. Oh, my voice hurts. Uh, if you in haven't the heard, news. there you go. If you haven't heard, Hurricane Idalia is predicted to bring catastrophic surge to the Florida coastline. And it's supposed to strike on Wednesday. Florida's four most recent hurricanes, Michael, Sally, Ian, and Nicole, all struck on Wednesday. And Idalia remains on a collision course with the Florida Gulf Coast. 
They're saying that this storm could become a Cat 4. It's not now. But once it hits the warm waters of the Gulf, you know, that's when the storms intensify. And they're predicting that this is... As of a few hours ago, the latest prediction was that it could become a Category 4 and hit this section of the northern Florida Gulf Coast, which has only seen a couple of major storms in its history. They're talking about landfall between Alligator Point and Crystal River, at least a Cat 3, which means well over 100 mile per hour winds. It's, an, it's a dangerous and extremely rare scenario for north central and west central Florida. The Big Bend and Nature Coast are no stranger to hurricanes, but Adalia would be making landfall as a major hurricane, just the second Category 3 or higher to do so in the last 170 years. The last one was uh, in 1896, the last major hurricane to hit that stretch of the Florida coastline. Wow. 100 and <clears throat> almost 130 years ago. So they're saying it'll bring a big storm surge, you know, possibly 11 foot, 7 to 11 foot waves, and then brings all that rain across the, the central upper Florida, uh, the, the center of the state, over to the coast, and then head out into the Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to call Harry right now. We're going to make a phone call to my friend Harry. Okay. He lives in Ocala, St. Pete. Um, he's pretty funny. It might be late. What time is it there? Uh, it is 11.18 p.m. Um, he might in be asleep. Is that too late to call? Is After a, 11? I think I think so. Is I that, think but it's actually is, 8 o'clock at night in California. Oh, it's been we were watching something where they were saying it like... It says Harry, Florida. Two, seven. Okay. Remember right. we were watching something they were saying like you can call after... You can't call after 9 or 9.30. Was it that um, Larry... Um, Larry David. Yeah, was that Larry David? Yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yeah. There was a whole show about how late you can call somebody. When can you call somebody? Well, I think, well, when can you? What do you think? What's the cutoff? You tell us, and we'll, we'll talk about it on our show later this I week. I think, I thought 8 o'clock, I can't, I can't. I, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, <clears throat> babe. Let's, let's All let you All kinds of issues voice. are happening. I still have this thigh in my eye. <laughs> if you can see it, look. Still have a it, it, was, it was fine for a while. And then I, I can't guess, wear makeup. I don't have any makeup on my face. You look so beautiful. You don't need makeup. Sun kissed. And now Rick kissed. Yes. Yeah, I but I have to say, so Ted met Asia at the airport, waited for her to come home in their brand new G-Wagon. Mm -hmm. And he gave her a little present uh -huh. with a, a card on it. That's so sweet. When she got into the car. That's so sweet. Rick does that for me. That was a really sweet thing to do. It he, was. He, he's a very thoughtful man. Very, very generous. Very generous, mm -hmm. thoughtful, thoughtful person. Yeah. And um, I just love love like that, you know? Yeah. And a man that truly loves their woman. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing, amazing. Well, we saw that in Ben and Megan, too, over this trip. Oh, Ben and Megan have the perfect relationship as well like, they're so great with each other they're such good people wow megan is an absolute gem and so is ben i love hanging out with that guy you I guys told, are like brothers i told him he was like my cool brother my yeah. brother and i don't really get along but ben and i get along like like we we should be brothers He's megan awesome. megan and ben are probably um the most amazing friends uh my mom loves them like yeah. I, I know people get a bad rap because they have the other the other beefs, beefs with other people. Yeah. But I can tell you right now, um, these people are the most amazing, truest, warmest, kindest, and great, they're fun to hang out with. Great heart, genuine. Uh, genuine. Thanks, mom. My genuine, mom loves them. They're genuine, thoughtful, generous, cool, fun. Yeah. They're not looking out funny. to be like uh, cool people. They're just genuinely great awesome loving people so yeah so we had a great time with them and um we have a lot of videos to share 
Uh, we'll share some tomorrow, and then we'll uh, put more on Patreon later this week. So um, thank you guys for being with us. I'm going to let Kelly rest her voice, and we'll be back <clears throat> with another Smash tomorrow. Yeah, I hope I can talk by then. If I can't, he's going to have to do it alone, which you guys all want. No, they don't. You're the star. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, you're sick. Have Rick do it alone. Okay, I will. All right, I'm telling you right now. I have, I have laryngitis. <laughs> Let's get you some tea. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs>